from Kern Government Television. Welcome to this week's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting. Originating from the County Administrative Center, located at 1115 at Truxton Avenue in Bakersfield, California. Grounded in ideas, energy, and innovation, Kern County's vision is to be a driving force for the world's fifth largest economy. And our mission is to exceed expectations of the communities we serve, changing the way they feel about government, those who manage it, and the services it provides. Today's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting will convene momentarily. Okay, uh, Board to reconvene. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Supervisor Peters. Supervisor Scrivener. Here. Supervisor Flores. Here. Supervisor Couch. Here. Supervisor Perez. Here. Welcome. Um, good afternoon and uh, welcome to the Tuesday, November 28th, 2023 uh, PM session of the Kern County Board of Supervisors. We'll first hear a uh, report from any actions taken in closed session. Uh, Ms. Margo Rizon. Thank you, good afternoon. This morning in closed session, you met on items 49 through 58, and there is no reportable action. Thank you, Ms. Rezon. Okay, at this time, we'll begin considering the consent agenda. Um, agendas are located at the back of the room for anyone wishing to follow along. All items listed with a CA above the item number are considered to be routine and uncontroversial by county staff. Consent items will be considered first and may be approved by one motion. If a member of the audience wishes to comment or ask questions regarding an item on the agenda, they may do so prior to a vote being taken. A member of the board may remove any item from the consent agenda and it will be heard in a listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the board concerning the item before action is taken. This time I'll read the consent agenda items. On page two, item four, on page three, items five through eight. On page four, item 11, and I'm gonna make a notation for items nine and 10. They have been withdrawn and will not be considered. On page five, items 12 through 14. On page six, items 15 through 19. On page seven, items 20 through 27. On page eight, items 28 through 32. On page nine, items 33 through 41. On page 10, items 42 through 49. On page 11, items 50 through 57. And on page 12, items 58 through 65. That concludes the consent agenda <laughs> items. Is there any member of the public that wishes to comment or have any questions about the consent agenda? Now's the time, please come forward. Yeah. Good afternoon, uh, David Fluhart, Havila, First District. I don't know if it's a consent agenda item, but I thought I'd put it in here. Um, this morning, we had a whole bunch of presentations that were under consent, ag as consent agenda item, and it just went through. And, and then I look at this afternoon, and item number one is a resolution proclaiming November 2023 as National Lung Cancer Awareness Month in Kern County. And I just want to say, I guess it's better late than never, being November 28th at the PM like meeting to uh, actually hand out this presentation. I would appreciate it, and all those lung people out there would probably appreciate putting it a little bit earlier in November. But you know, we cover the ground when we can get to it. So uh, I just want to like, you know, maybe be a little bit more cautious about these type of faux pas, I guess I'd call it. Anyways, um, thank you for the consideration and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, please, if any. Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for action and consideration of, on the consent agenda. Motion on consent. Thank you. We have a motion? Second. Motion and second, please cast your vote. The motion is approved, four ayes, one absent, Supervisor Peters. Thank you. Okay, at this, item, at this time we'll go to item number one, under resolutions and proclamations, and this is to proclaim November 2023 uh, as National Lung Cancer Awareness Month in Kern County, and Supervisor Couch will be making the presentation. Motion on the proclamation. Okay, motion. Second. Motion second, oh, please. Second. Please cast your vote. The motion is approved, four ayes, one absent, Supervisor Peters.
I want to thank my friend for the uh, introduction just a minute ago for this item. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I want to uh, read this proclamation and present it to Matthew Cothran. He's the director of uh, community integration. He's got some, some friends with him that I'm going to allow him to introduce. Um, the proclamation reads, the Board of Supervisors County of Kern State of California has officially proclaimed, proclaimed November 2023 as National Lung Cancer Awareness Month in Kern County and the recognition has been entered into the official board minutes signed by our Honorable Chairman Jeff Flores. It's dated today, November 28th, 2023. Matthew, I'll give this to you and let you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Couch, um, uh, Chairman Flores, and entire uh, Board of Supervisors. And, and thank you again for uh, definitely taking the time for this proclamation today. And I, for the record, I would like to, uh, I appreciate everyone's um, uh, attention to lung cancer awareness. And I would like to say for the record, it was uh, actually upon our request based on availability to have it today at the 2 p.m. session. But thank you all so much for bringing this important matter. I would like to highlight uh, Adventist Health, the AIS Cancer Center, is proud to bring forward to Kern County the first lung nodule program to our community. Uh, not only to the residents of Bakersfield, but all areas of Kern County, whether it be Delano, Tehachapi, Lamont, um, Taft, uh, we are proud to uh, be able to provide this service. Um, today, the Adventist Health AIS Cancer Center currently serves approximately 75% of community members diagnosed with cancer here in Kern County. It's not something we take lightly and something that we continue to evaluate the need uh, to serve our community. Really quickly, I would like to introduce a few folks um, that are part of this remarkable team uh, with us. We, we have Vivian Cow with um, our foundation team. We have Tara Shine, our manager of operations for our AIS Cancer Center. We have Kim Odens, the director of the Cancer Center, as well as the uh, soon to be famous uh, Raymond Andreas, who serves as the registered nurse lung navigator for our um, cancer program. So again, as, a, as an organization, we look forward to continuing to meet the needs of the community and thanking the community for the trust they, they put in us to serve their, their healthcare needs. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Supervisor Perez would like to address you as well. I just wanted to say briefly, Matt, you're an excellent presenter. I don't think I've seen you before, uh, and uh, I hope you don't live in the fifth district. Is what I'm thinking right now. But no, you, you're really a fabulous presenter. You have a just a great, sharp presentation that uh, you know is just very impressive. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to item number two: public presentations. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the board on any matter, not on the agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the board. Board members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the board at a later meeting. Also, the board may take action to direct staff to place a matter of business on a future agenda. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state and spell your name before making your presentation. Thank you. Havilah First District um, again. Uh, this morning we had a 30-minute presentation by Mrs. Espinoza on on changes in the voting and whatnot like that. And some of the more notable things I saw, I, I saw it on YouTube, by the way. So I'm happy it's there on YouTube because I couldn't make it down this morning. Um, that uh, the county is proud of Kern County's unprecedented 2.7 million dollar investment. That's that's really. Good. I'm happy that we made that investment. Um, the next one was uh, Mrs. Espinoza trying, working so hard to balance um, security and transparency with voter autonomy. That's really important, but I don't know. I think it's a little bit heavy on one side. And and the one thing, and, and I really appreciate her reassuring her, reassuring the public that the temps are are trained in signature verification. There was no reassurance that the, they're doing their job correctly. I mean, everybody is trained in what they're supposed to do and then half the people don't do what they're supposed to do. So when, when Tom Povach, the Kern County Coordinator for the Election Integrity Project asked some questions, nobody really answered him. And he had some 
good questions. And, and what really blows my mind is that I, I, I would think that he's wrong when he says that the elections department can't be audited. I think that would be wrong. But what really blows my mind is that no one is sincerely interested in auditing the signatures from the mail-in ballots. I mean, I, I, I would have hoped that at least Mr. Peters, Supervisor Peters would have brought it up and said, hey, can we talk about this? Can we, I mean, how hard would it to actually make an ordinance requiring that? I mean, you guys could sit here right this afternoon, talk about it for three minutes after I'm talking about it, refer to, to Ms. Raison there, and she'd get with Espinoza, and you guys could work it out, and I'd tell you what, in a month, you guys could probably vote on it. Thank you. That's, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Uh, seriously consider auditing those signatures. Thank right, you, thank Mr. Flaherty. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, next speaker, please. Good afternoon. I'm Eddie Lane. Um, Kern County Parks are not safe. They're not safe because of inaction by this County Board of Supervisors and General Service Division of the Kern County Administrative Office. Kern County Parks, including those with millions spent on upgrades, are not safe because of little or no ranger coverage. That was the message in a speech given to the November 15 Kern County Parks and Recreation Commission meeting from one Kern County Park ranger. The speech is attached with 80% of Kern County Park Rangers standing behind him in support of the comments. An example today is found as this morning's press release from the Bakersfield Californian of an unruly crowd at Lake Woolhomes with people driving rec recklessly and later the crowd moved with McFarland police reporting someone pointing a firearm mounted laser at a police helicopter and officers finding a loaded semi-automatic firearm with an illegal extended magazine. No ranger presence at Lake Wilhelms Park. Other examples, only one full-time ranger assigned to Hart Park with reports of vehicles dangerously speeding 50 or 60 miles an hour at the Nature Center last Saturday in front of it. No signs to call rangers for assistance. Only one extra help ranger assigned to Buena Vista Lake. No rangers assigned to Bell Terrace, Casa Loma, Heritage, Pioneer and Virginia Avenue Parks, seemingly no ongoing coverage in districts four and five. What is needed now is a public, dist public district by district action plan to address this critical public safety issue, which was originally brought to, brought to the board's attention in April, eight months ago. Talk of secret salary negotiations lacks meaning without action now. Public safety was a top priority for Measure K funding. Over a year after its passage, our parks are less safe than they were before its passage. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Welcome, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair Flores and members of the board. My name is Eric Arias. I'm here joined with Ms. Sofia Calero from United Ways of Central Eastern California. Uh, indeed, we have changed our name. Uh, we were formerly United Ways of Kern County, but we've been called upon to expand into Inyo, Mono, and San Bernardino counties. Uh, so we have recently changed our name. Uh, but rest assured, our office will remain here in Bakersfield, just down the street on 17th Street and I Streets. Uh, but secondly, we wanted to shed some light on some important work that happens in each of your districts every year. Uh, as we wrap up this last tax season, we are already gearing up for the next tax season. Uh, in partnership with CAPK, the IRS, and United Ways of California, we provide free tax services to qualifying residents through the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, otherwise known as VITA. And as we wrap up this year, uh, we're looking for your support. For those who are not familiar with VITA, this is a volunteer-based program where volunteers are professionally trained and IRS certified uh, to do taxes for families and residents. And with that, I want to pass it over to my colleague, Ms. Sofia Calero, with some more information. Good afternoon, everybody. Like Eric said, my name is Sofia Calero, and I'm the Economic Resilience Manager at United Way. And before I share with you about the opportunities to get involved, I want to share a little bit of the data that we had for the past tax season through the VITA program. 
So for the 2022 tax season, we were able to file 2,370 2, tax returns. 245 of those were ITIN filers. And then through those tax returns, we were able to bring back $3.8 million into the Kern County community to those families that filed with us. So every year we continue to increase the number of families that we help through the VITA program. And with this increased need, we continue to rely on the general support for the volunteers you know, throughout Kern County. So in the packet that I provided to each, of, uh, to each of you, you will find the following dates for orientation and training sessions. So we have coming up orientations November 30th, December 4th, December 5th. Those are from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. in-house in our uh, building. And then we also are offering volunteer, tra volunteer training sessions, and, and they're gonna be one in December and one in January. And again, you know, I just wanna emphasize that we cannot run this without our volunteer support. And we appreciate if you can share this information with all the volunteers in your different districts. Thank you again for, you know, for the opportunity to speak with all of you. Thank you, and thank you for the work that you do. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, next speaker, please, if any. Them. That brings us to public presentations, and I believe Supervisor Couch has an announcement. Oh, board member, yeah, board member announcements, I'm sorry, thank you. <clears throat> I do, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had the opportunity to uh, speak to the crowd at um, Camp Hamilton on um, Veterans Day, which was November 11th, and I got a chance to meet uh, Glenn Denton, Jr. He's known as Master Guns. Um, he's Master Gunnery Sergeant, USMC retired, uh, Glenn Denton Jr. And he's the guy, if you know the story, I, I invite you to go to the website for Camp Hamilton and read the story about how it came into being. Um, his unit was known as the Kool-Aid Kids and they, <clears throat> at great risk to themselves, went in and retrieved um, wounded and dead soldiers. Many of them, many of his um, comrades were killed. And when he got, when they got back, they decided they needed to do something to keep their memories alive. And that is the reason that Camp Hamilton exists. Glenn went out and bought 10 acres, um, started it. It's a place where um, a family or friends can uh, plant a tree in memory of their fallen veteran. Um, it's with profound sadness that I have to announce that shortly after that, I think it was the weekend after Thanksgiving, Glenn was killed in a car crash. <laughs> I got the opportunity on, on November the 8th, or excuse me, November 11th, to present him with a, a county proclamation, just thanking him for getting Camp Hamilton started. But it, it's just, I wanted to ask if we could adjourn this meeting this afternoon in his honor, send a letter to his wife, Esther, um, just, just in recognition of, of what he has done for our country, what he has done for our, our local veterans, and uh, in recognition of his of the unfortunate loss that uh, all of his compatriots and comrades have suffered. Thank you. Absolutely, our condolences. Absolutely. Thank you, Supervisor Couch, and we will um, indeed adjourn in his memory, which brings us um, to adjournment. And so we will adjourn in his memory and. Having no more items to consider, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn to December 5th, 9 a.m. So moved. Okay, thank you. <laughs>